This ADX indicator is commonly used to measure the strength of a trend, but does it actually help us make any money? I ran a backtest over two years of data and the initial results look pretty good. In this video, I'll explain the backtest code and tweak the entry and exit conditions to see if we can improve the strategy even further. First, I'll show you how to set up the indicator on your trading view window. If you were to go into indicators and look for the average directional index, which is what the ADX is, it will give you just one single line. But that's not actually what we're looking for with this indicator. So I'm going to remove this and add in a different one, which is the directional movement index, this indicator here. This gives you three lines and at first it looks a little bit confusing, but if I go into the settings, you can see that it actually has an ADX line, but it also has a plus DI and a minus DI. These are the positive and negative directional indices. I'm going to reconfigure this slightly though, because I think for positive, I prefer to use green and then for negative, I'll use red. And then for the middle ADX line, I'll just use something neutral. I'll go with blue. So now I know at a glance that the blue line is my ADX line, red is the negative DI and green is the positive DI. The main line that we focus on is the ADX itself. You can see the value of it on the right hand side. And the idea is that as the ADX increases, the strength of the trend is also increasing. So it's basically giving you pre-warning that there might be a trend developing. The positive and negative DIs can help you filter out the direction of that trend. The rules for the strategy are quite simple. First, we're looking for the blue ADX line to be above the value of 25. This indicates that there might be a trend developing. Then for long entries, I want the green positive line to cross above the red negative line. I'll wait for the candle to close to confirm that signal. And then I enter at the open of the next candle. And let's have a look at a couple of trade examples here. We can see here in this region that the blue ADX line is above 25. But for a long entry, I'm waiting for the green line to cross above the red line. And that happens on this candle here. This becomes my signal candle and I buy at the open of the candle afterwards. So I enter here. The stop loss is at the nearest swing low, which is around about here. And then I aim for a two to one ratio in my take profit. So although price did come down close to our stop loss, it never stopped out and it went on to a nice winning trade. Another example here, we've got the blue ADX line above 25, but we're waiting for that cross between the green and the red, which happens around here on this big candle. I then wait for this candle to close and buy on the open of the next one. Stop loss at the swing low here, take profit set at a ratio of two to one, giving another nice positive trade. And that's a couple of examples of good winning trades, but of course there's going to be plenty of trade setups that aren't going to work out nicely like this. So the next thing to do is to jump into the back test and test this out properly on some data. I'm not going to go through all of my code, but I'll just give a quick overview of what's happening here. I first import the libraries that I'm going to use for this back test. I then set my time rate and the symbol. So here I'm testing on the SPY ETF. I will also test a few different variants of the strategy, but for now we'll just focus on the base strategy itself as I described it. Starting balance of 10,000 just for some context, risking 2% on each trade. The ADX level that we're looking for is to be above 25. And then later on for refining the strategy, I will also add a 200 EMA and will define an RSI level of 70 as our limit. So I'm not worried about these two variables just yet, but we'll use them later on. I then have a function that loads in my data from my CSV file. So if you want to test this on something else, you can just replace your own CSV data instead. After that, I calculate the various inputs. So these are my ADX and plus and minus DIs, the ATR, which is the average true range, the EMA, the RSI, and then my swing high and the swing low. After that, I can start to generate the signals for the strategy. And I split them out into various entry conditions. Condition one is that the ADX has to be above that level of 25. Condition two is that the positive DI crosses above the negative DI. And then conditions three and four, which I'm not using just yet, are that we close above the 200 day EMA and the RSI is below that overbought level of 70. So that gives me my entry signals for the strategy. As long as conditions one and two were met on the close of yesterday's candle, then I have an entry signal. I then define my exits. And seeing as I'm going to be using swing lows for this, I place my stop loss at this nearest swing low. 
I work out that stop loss distance, and then I set my take profit at a ratio of two to one. The rest of this code is the back test itself. So I'm not going to go through all of that. We'll just skip ahead to the outcome of this test. So down here, we see the equity chart that gives us the performance from that strategy. And right away, it doesn't really look that great. It does give a profit overall, but the equity curve is quite choppy, not very consistent and linear. So I need to start looking at ways to improve this and see if we can get any better returns from it. The first thing I want to change is actually the stop loss. I think that using swing lows can be quite inconsistent. So I'm going to use the ATR indicator, which is the average true range. The ATR gives you the range of the last 14 candles. So it's much more reflective of how much price is actually moving. And I'm going to use the ATR for my stop loss instead. To make that change, I simply go into my backtest function and I change this exit condition from swing low to ATR. Now I can rerun the code and we'll see what the result comes out to. So the equity curve there actually looks even worse. Using swing lows at least generated some kind of profit, whereas it seems that using ATR ends up losing money with the strategy. But what I'm wondering is how much of a difference these red and green lines actually make and whether it's possible to exclude them and just trade based on the blue ADX indicator instead. So what I've done now is when I'm generating my signals, I've gotten rid of the second condition, which is the one that looked for a cross between the positive and a negative DI. So now the only valid condition is C1, which is that the ADX is above that 25 value. So I rerun my back test and have a look at the results. And now it's looking much better. So it seems that waiting for that crossover between the two lines was either getting me into trades too late or it just wasn't generating enough trades because getting rid of them improved the strategy significantly. If we have a quick look at the metrics, they should be looking a lot better as well. Annual return is 73%. We're only in the market 18% of the time, which is not huge. The drawdown is relatively big as well. But the annual return and a drawdown can be controlled by simply reducing the risk. So instead of risking 2% per trade, you could risk 1.5% or even 1%. The return would decrease, but the drawdown would also decrease with it. The win rate is around 40%, and the average reward to risk ratio is almost 2. Considering this is a trend trading strategy, a 40% win rate is pretty typical and actually quite good for this kind of risk to reward. So this already is a really good result, and I would say a great improvement from the initial base strategy rules. But what I can still try to optimize is the stop loss and the take profit ratios. Right now the stop loss is set to ATR and take profit is just double that distance. My backtest function here actually takes the stop loss and the take profit ratios in as arguments and they're defined up here in a range. So I can test a larger range of stop losses and take profits very quickly. And I'm just going to do them one at a time. So first of all, let's test stop losses between one times ATR and three times ATR. So if I rerun this and see what the results show me, for reference, the yellow line is the one I had by default. The stop loss is one times ATR. And you can see that it actually does pretty well from the outset. The only one that seems to outperform it is the light blue, which is when the stop loss is one and a half times ATR. So I'm going to change my stop loss ratio to this instead. Now that I've updated the stop loss, I can do the same for my take profit range. So I'm going to actually drop this down to one and I'll test take profits up to five. So we'll run that again and let's just have a look and see what results I get. Dropping the take profit down to one gives me the yellow line, which is the worst performer out of all of them. The rest of them all seem to just bunch up on top of each other. The best one here is the light blue line, which is a take profit of three and a half times the stop loss. So back up in my code, I've now got a stop loss of one and a half times ATR and then a risk to reward ratio of three and a half times that new stop loss. So if we run all this code again, I'm going to get my final output from the strategy. And now we're seeing an even bigger improvement from before. The equity curve looks great. A little dip down here, but generally it's moving upwards pretty steadily. It doesn't have a lot of big dips and a lot of drawdown sections. If we have a look at the metrics, the annual return is now 112%. And the drawdown has actually dropped a little bit from before as well. It's still in the market only 15% of the time, so it isn't trading all that frequently. A win rate of 37, which is typical for a trend trading strategy. And now the average reward to risk is 3.18. The final thing that I want to do with this is also test those additional indicators that I had configured before, which is an EMA of 200 and then using the RSI 
to stay out of overbought levels. So I'm going to uncomment these additional strategies here. So now I've got my base strategy, which we've just tested, as well as the 200 EMA and the RSI variance. I'll run everything again. And now I should see three lines on my charts. The yellow is the baseline strategy. And then we can see this purple line is using the RSI and the blue line is using the EMA. So it seems that adding those extra indicators actually took away from the performance of the strategy. And we can compare the metrics of them all side by side here. The annual return of the base strategy is better than both of the other variants. But what I did notice is that the drawdown on the 200 EMA filter actually improved quite a bit. And I guess that makes sense. This is a trend trading strategy and the 200 EMA is a trend filter. So it makes sure that I'm trading in the direction of that trend. So I would say that this is also a pretty viable strategy. And lastly, let's just test this on daily data as well. So all of this has been hourly. Let's test this on daily and just see if it still holds up on a different time frame. So the results here on a daily also come out really strong. And they're actually very similar to what I observed on hourly. The default strategy does the best. And then we've got the 200 EMA with the RSI strategy lagging behind. The metrics tell a slightly different story. The annualized return is far lower. But of course, trading on the daily candles just means that we're not getting anywhere near as many trades as on the hourly. So while the strategy still holds up, I don't think it's worth trading it on the daily candles. In summary, the ADX strategy definitely has some potential. The pros are that it generates a good return. It maintains a decent win rate considering the high reward to risk ratio. And it has a relatively low drawdown which can be improved even further by applying the 200 EMA filter. The downsides are that it doesn't trade very often, so it doesn't translate to longer timeframes very well. As this is a trend trading strategy, I think it could be improved even further by refining the exits to try and catch more of the subsequent move. This could be done by closing half of the position at a take profit and then letting the other half just run or using a trailing stop or some other method but I think my test showed that it's viable as a baseline strategy. So let me know what you guys would do to try and improve this strategy even further. And if you like this kind of content, then give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel.